Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you for viewing. The most common question asked in the paranormal field is, what is a ghost? Sure, we all know those campfire stories. We all know of the experiences of people have of banging in the night or doors mysteriously closing by themselves, correct? But I'm going to take these stories further go into the where, the why, the how these people that once lived are now in this ghostly apparitional state. So every story that I tell will be a true story. Every story that I tell will be recorded by other paranormal investigators where there is real evidence out there if you wish to go and find it. So buckle up guys, grab your pillow and let's start the story. Tonight is the story of Catherine Howard. Catherine Howard was born in 1521. Her mother, who was named Joyce Culpepper, she'd been previously married and already had five children. Then she met Lord Edmund Howard. Now, Lord Ed Edmund Howard, he was the third son of Thomas Howard, the second Duke of Norfolk. So therefore, being the third child, he did not have those privileges, the money, the lands, that was given by um, to the first son of a family. So together with Joyce and Thomas being the parents, they had another six children together. So there was actually 11 children in this poverty-stricken family in medieval times. So some back history on Lord Edmund Howard. His sister Elizabeth was the mother of Henry VIII's second wife, Anne Boleyn. Wow, so his sister was Anne Boleyn's mother. And he was the father of the king's fifth wife, Catherine Howard. Wow. His first cousin, Marguerite Wentworth, was the mother of Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour. There's a lot of connections here, isn't there? Okay. So, what happened back then was Joyce, the mother, she actually died when Catherine was only about seven years old. Now, Catherine was the second youngest of these 11 children. So you can imagine the struggles that this family were having. Catherine would have been in a position growing up because of the lack of wealth, the lack of land and titles, even though in her father did have a title. He was actually a politician and by all means to survive, he actually borrowed money and he begged family and friends to give him money that he could never repay. So let's just look there straight away with this man after Joyce the mother died. Imagine the stress. Imagine trying to keep up those appearances in medieval England where his name or his reputation was so important. So Catherine, she ended up going and she was living um, with other people after her mother died. Now straight from Wikipedia, I'm going to just quickly go through some things here. Catherine was sent with some of her siblings, well there was 11 of them remember, to live in the care of her father's stepmother, Agnes Howard, the dower, dowager Duchess of Norfolk. 
The Dowager Duchess managed large households in Chesham House in Horsham, Sussex. So while she was there, she became one of the many wards under the care of this dowager. Usually the children of our Aristide, um, aristocratic but poor relatives resided there. While sending young children to be educated and trained in aristocratic households was common in European nobles at the time, supervision at both this Chesworth house and Lambeth was apparently laxed. So these children were virtually doing their own thing, trying to survive in medieval times with no adult guidance, no adult, adult wisdom, and certainly no morals or values being taught. So what ended up happening with poor Catherine? She was influenced by some of the older ones who were starting to get interested with men. There was times when the men would come into the sleeping chambers of all the girls in these houses and there would be sexual acts conducted. So you must remember here that Catherine was a very impressionable, very influential child seeing all this activity. So she would actually create in her own psyche that this was normal behaviour, correct? Because she's seeing it being observed in these houses where everyone just ran rampant, correct? So she ended up meeting a man and it is probable that these two actually did have a sexual relationship. Um, unfortunately, Karen, Catherine, she was sent to the court. Um, she actually went and started to work in the king's or the queen's court. So what happened was Catherine is now only 19 years old when she marries King Henry VIII of England. So they were, they were married at Bishop Bonner at Oatlands Palace on the 28th of July 1540. She was only 19 years old. Henry VIII by this time was already 49. He'd already had many wives before had Catherine came along. First wife was Catherine of Aragon. Now, little bit of history here, Catherine was actually married to Henry VIII's elder brother who died, which forced King Henry VIII to become the king. He actually didn't even want to be king because he had the elder brother. So when his elder brother died, he married his brother's widow, which was Catherine. He left her because of Anne Boleyn the most famous of his wives, because she was the one who forced Henry to change the laws of religion to create the, the Church of England instead of being Catholic. And it actually went all the way to the Pope in Rome to change history for Anne Boleyn. Then, so Anne Boleyn was beheaded. She was actually the mother of, drumroll, Queen Elizabeth I. Then along came... Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour died in childbirth. She actually had a son, but he only died for about 15 or 19 years. Then there was Anne of Cleves, who was a European princess that Henry VIII quickly annulled because he didn't like her at all. And then he met Catherine because Catherine was working as one of the maids for Anne of Cleves. So here is this 19 year old girl, very impressionable being in these houses at a young age with all these elder people, probably um, doing their own thing without much adult supervision, caring and looking after themselves. She was in this position where she was looking at the elders in this household growing up, where she was very impressionable by looking at who these people were and how they conducted themselves, correct? So when Catherine met Henry VIII, she would have been very sexually orientated. There's a lot about 
poor Catherine having a lot of boyfriends, if you know what I mean. So let's go down with Catherine. So she was married to, to Henry. So back in 1540. Now, how do you think she felt when she married the King of England, when he's already had wives who were beheaded, divorced, and who had died in childbirth? How scary would have it been for such an influential, naive 19-year-old girl thinking that she was coming into that role as queen, as um, consort of England. He was showering her with clothes. He was giving her gifts of the most expensive jewels in whole, the whole of Europe because he wanted an heir that was a male. So he was showering her with all this affection. So why did she go and have an affair on the king? Could it be that he was 49, very obese, and that he also had ulcers all over his legs that had to be bandaged every day? Imagine the stench of those ulcers before penicillin was invented. Imagine those oozing wounds that she would have been seeing when he said, let's go to bed for the night. As a 19-year-old girl, you can understand why she may have gone into the arms of another man, correct? So, there was somebody whose name was Thomas Culpepper, a young man who had succeeded the king for the Queen's affections. This is straight from Wikipedia, by the way. According to Derham's latest later testimony, she had considered marrying Culpepper during her time as a maid of honour for Anne of Cleves. Wow. Culpepper called Catherine my little sweet fool in a love letter. Wow. It has been alleged that in the spring of 1541, the pair were meeting secretly. Their meetings were allegedly arranged by one of Catherine's older ladies-in-waiting, who was Jane Boleyn. Now, if you know who Jane Boleyn was, she was the widow of George Boleyn, who was Anne Boleyn's brother. Very, very tight fit, isn't it? So you can imagine if all these people are getting killed when it's all interrelated um, families and interactions, there would have been a lot of back-talking and gossiping going on, no doubt. So are these real stories? So as the king's bad moods deepened, now a little bit of side note here. When Anne Boleyn was married to Henry VIII, she actually became pregnant after she'd given birth to Queen um, Princess Elizabeth I. Henry went out jousting. And while he was out jousting, he, you know what a jousting is? They sit on a horse with that long pole. He's got the other person at the other end. You put your pole out and you've got to knock the other person off this horse. He actually got um, knocked off his horse and he fell to the ground unconscious. Anne Boleyn, she actually had a miscarriage because Henry was in unconscious for three days, apparently. So that is why, or what led to the downfall of Anne Boleyn, because she needed to get pregnant to hide that miscarriage. Wow, look how that ended out. Okay, so... Do you think Catherine knew all this history about sleeping with somebody else? I'm pretty sure she would have been very aware that he'd killed an ex-wife for having a boyfriend, correct? So, Thomas Culpepper. He actually sent a letter to her that has still remained today, testifying his love for her. So there is evidence out there that they did have a relationship and it wasn't just a one-sided um what do we call that word um he didn't he wasn't um um just infatuated with her so i think it was returned 
So on November 1st, 1541, the king arranged to be found praying at the Chapel Royal, which is a room in Hampton Court Palace. So he was telling everyone that he was going to be there, but he actually wasn't. There he received a letter describing the allegations against Catherine regarding this Culpepper guy. On 7th of November, Archbishop Cranmer led a delegation of councillors to Winchester Palace and Southwark to question her. Even the staunch Cranmer found the teenage Catherine frantic. This is a girl who's still a teenager. She's the Queen of England. Her husband is 49 years old, obese, with these stinky ulcers all over his leg. She was found frantic, incoherent, and quite pitiable, saying, I found her in such lamentation and heaviness as I never saw no creature, so that it would have pined any man's heart to have looked upon her. He ordered the guards to remove any objects that she might use to commit suicide. So, Catherine, poor lady, she was brought back by a barge um, to from Hampton Court Palace. But before we go there, she was, when they tried to arrest Catherine, she thought that Henry was down in the prayer room, correct? Because that's what he told everybody. So she was running down this hallway. And if you look at the ghost haunted hallway of Hampton Court Palace, you'll see photos of it. She ran down to that room screaming her innocence as the guards were running after her, trying to detain her. So they've captured her. And they put her into a, on a barge taking her up the Thames towards the Tower of London. So, as she came up under the Tower of London, there on a spike was the head of her boyfriend Culpepper. How do you think she felt when she saw his head on a spike? For a 19-year-old, that would have been extremely traumatic knowing that she was going to the Tower of London which was the prison when probably not too many escaped so Catherine unfortunately she was beheaded as well so let's have a look here at this poor girl imagine the trauma growing up of a, with being with the young, second youngest of 11 children, no money, where she goes into this house of the dowager and she's trying to impress a man, obviously, to look after her like they used to in medieval times because women were basically for breeding, whereas the man had the title exactly right, true? So she would have been looking at these physical attractions sexual favours in order to obtain a husband of wealth worked out because she ended up marrying Henry VIII hello but could she give up those foolish behaviours of her past was the question so shortly after she was beheaded there were stories circulating within Hampton Court Palace of screaming and people were saying my god that is Catherine's voice They've, there are people who have reported over the past 400 years seeing a frantic and distraught girl of 19 years old racing down holding her skirts up as she ran in her medieval dress running down that hallway to see Henry to claim her innocence and tell him what was really going on. Her ghost is one of the most famous ghost stories on the planet because not only has many people seen her, not only 
have people documented, photographed and voice recorded her voice in that hallway. The very fact that her ghost has remained for over 400 years is testament of how passionate she was not to go to heaven. So let's have a look at why she stays as a ghost. She still believes, in my opinion, that she is innocent. She is still trying to force her innocence onto ever, whoever hears her story and please. She obviously is so distraught, not knowing what she was doing, for she was only 19 years old and she was married to the King of England. She did not know the severity of what had been instilled in her while she was growing up. So some of the evidence, there are photos of an apparition in this, it's now called the Haunted Hall in Hampton Court Palace. I've actually looked at the floor plan of Hampton Court Palace and you can imagine where she would have been running to. Her, the Queen's bedrooms are way over the other side of the building. So she would have been running frantically, trying to evade those um, guards and to get to Henry to plead her innocence. So why does she stay? That is the big question with regards to a ghost story, right? She stays with my personal belief because she thought she was innocent. She was so passionate to marry this man who she believed would look after her because that was had been instilled in her from childhood. Find a rich man to marry, which was the norm back in the medieval times. So once she'd found Henry, she didn't realise what she was doing. She just thought her upbringing behaviours was something that she could bring into married life with the King of England. So she still screams. There are many EVPs that people have shared over the years, electronic voice recordings, where she is heard screaming and people have seen her frantically reaching out and trying to get these guards off her as she's running down this hallway. So why does she, why, this is a question, why does she haunt Hampton Court Palace? Why doesn't she now haunt the Tower of London where she died? Because it comes down to the connection, the energy that is now emitted in that paranormal phenomena. That is her home. She'd lived there for two years. That where that bedroom was where she'd slept, where she had relations with the king, that is where she has put that passion. That is where she has instilled that connection of that energy where she remains. So if you are in London, England, go down and check out Hampton Court Palace because her ghost is still there. Many people have seen her. Many people have photographed her and many people have heard her screams of trying to defend her life. Hope you enjoyed this ghost story tonight, guys. Catch us next week. Bye.